welcome back and we're getting ready to move into our first segment for today as uh, we look towards World Water Day taking place in March and the preparations that are currently ongoing. We have with us at this time the Principal Hydrologist of the Hydrology Unit in the Ministry of Natural Resources, Tennille Williams, and we have a lecturer for the Natural Resources Management Program at the University of Belize, Josue Ak. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning and welcome, guys. And uh, World Water Day. Water is the most important element of life, that much we know. And the World Water Day, uh, of course, observed around the world, right? Or observed yes. around the world. We've been to a few of the uh, activities that would take place here in Belize. Talk to us about it. Uh, how was it uh, over the past few and what's uh, going to happen this year? Okay, well, World Water Day is celebrated globally uh -huh. on March 22nd. Um, it arose out of the UN meetings. And so um, all the UN countries, and I mean countrywide, we um, celebrate the activities on that day. For the most part, sometimes it doesn't happen on the actual day, but a couple years we've been lucky <laughs> that we could get it celebrated on the actual day. Last year it was in the middle of Easter, wasn't it? Right, yeah. and we had competitions. <laughs> and then we had competitions with schools yeah. because, you know, the whole exam schedules and preparing for CXCs That's and so right. those have an impact on the participation from the students. But we were lucky that we had some very shining students that did their CXCs, mm -hmm. did their exams and still took part in the competitions. Excellent. Well, so let's go back to the big picture and talk about uh, why it is important that we celebrate World Water Day across the globe and specifically in Belize. Okay, um, well, I'll give Mr. Ake a chance to talk. Well, thank you. Well, water is, is a vital, is a vital resource and it is the, uh, in some countries, a human right. And it is the resources that intertwine everything, going from biological process to uh, so the uh, ecosystem, the environmental uh, importance. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, one important thing is the water quality that has to be uh, safeguarded. Yeah. And uh, this year, it is um, the theme is why waste water, and the uh, main thing is to see how we can reduce the production of wastewater and also reuse the wastewater. Uh, uh, is it why waste water or why waste water? Right. Question. <laughs> uh -huh. question. Question. Yeah, question. The theme is waste water because yeah. that's um. the overarching theme. And so the campaign that we're going on this year is why waste it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so they targeted five sectors, not the only sectors, but the most um, proliferate ones. Mm -hmm. And it's about waste water and the water cycle because mm -hmm. we know that there's no new water on the earth. Mm -hmm. So it's been here since the creation of the earth, I think it's about 6,000 years. So um, we're reusing the same water. So we have to realize that whatever we waste, we're putting it back into use. Um, I'm so grateful that you <coughs> brought that up because I think that's, that's something that we don't think about. You see the rain falling down and mm -hmm. you know I, I don't think we think of where it came from uh, and that it's not necessarily new water. <laughs> yeah, right. I think it's approximately 3% of the entire water that is fresh water. It's okay. going to be consumed because the, other re the rest is the um, sea, salt water, mm -hmm. sea water. Yeah. So They're that locked up in glaciers. Yeah, yeah, and that three percent is stored in temporarily and within the water cycle in the in the rivers or the groundwater. Mm -hmm. So now yes. I I know we we've tackled this issue before, but it's still worthwhile uh, looking at. And with the uh, exposure that uh, you all have had with the schools. Um, and when you go out into different community education activities, mm -hmm. uh, you have to remind people that this resource that we seem to take so much for granted mm -hmm. is uh, a, a very precious one um, for people in other parts of the world. And we have a role in protecting it for the consumption mm -hmm. of others and for or future consumption as well. How, uh, how is it now in terms of going out and educating people on this issue? Oh, uh, <laughs> I'm going to take that. Yes. Last year, um, the University of Belize got the privilege to join the planning committee mm -hmm. of this World Water Day. Um, and we had within our faculty um, department do, do the project that do um, research, um, outreach mm -hmm. and uh, in the Stan Creek Valley, mm -hmm. and uh, we did uh, about three 
uh, visits to the primary school uh, for uh, standard four and, st and standard five. Oh man, and we took uh, with a couple other faculty members, took our uh, microscopes mm -hmm. and uh, you know pond water, and uh, that was a hit. And we, we I mean, it, like how the kids just love to see the the organism under the microscope. And then apart from that, we did some class activity to do water conservation. Uh, um, tips and activities, mm -hmm. um, but the microscope was a hit. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to see the things you didn't know were in there. Yeah. <laughs> when it comes to um, yeah. the, the, the student piece, because you're a lecturer, mm -hmm. um, from, because uh, during the commercial break, I, I was mentioning to you my time being at Central Farm, and watershed management was one of the biggest things. Mm -hmm. We know the importance of water. Uh, mm -hmm. Are students catching on, and do they want to really work along when it comes to uh, watershed management? Uh, on a whole and water in this country? Yeah, yes, mm -hmm. and they are interested in, in it uh, right now, especially in water quality mm -hmm. uh, management. And the students get involved in, in, these, in this topic in two ways. Well, academic-wise academic with, the, with the courses, like watershed, um, the watershed ecology and management, mm -hmm. other courses in the biology program when it has to do with the, how the, what microbes live in the water. Mm -hmm. And apart from that, also in the practical field, in terms of um, um, thesis research in the bachelor's biology and bachelor's in the natural resource management program. And that's how they get involved, and especially learning the techniques on collecting data and then interpreting the data. And then, of course, when you do the whole um, um, defending of the thesis, um, mm -hmm. like that, that's how they get yeah. involved. On, on the other end, mm -hmm. we try to educate more about the, the possibilities for job opportunities. Okay. Yes. And that's what the team brought out this year, that they focused on the water cycle, they focused on cities, on industry, on irrigation. Mm -hmm. So it's telling you the different sectors that you could get into or, you know, pique your interest and see, you know, maybe I might not want to do watershed management, but I might want to do irrigation design, yeah. or I want to do drainage. I know you have engineers. So on, on the other spectrum of actually teaching the students, mm -hmm. yeah. we provide the information or the background to say, okay, you know, it's not just being a hydrologist or being a water analyst. You have a plethora of other job opportunities that you could diversify. Yeah. And, you know, st you're creating a market for yourself. You're creating a niche. Yeah. So it's on a whole, it's all about education, telling you what is out there, what you need to do, and how you need, you need to get it. Now, as I pointed out earlier, uh, it, living in a country where we feel like water is an abundant resource, uh, we don't always pay attention to some of the challenges that we have in particular areas. And I wanted to touch on, on a couple that have come to mind. Uh, let's start off with irrigation, first of all, which is a, an emerging uh, area for c developing a career. Um, but it is also becoming more and more important given the changes in our rain cycles uh, for our agriculture industry. Let, let's talk about how, uh, as a hydrologist and as the Ministry of Natural Resources, we've been tackling that issue. Okay, um, our educational campaign has always been that you could mimic the scientific processes with machines that they, what you're going to hear about later with the reverse osmosis and the cleaning of chemicals and treatment plants. You can put the water through a natural process mm -hmm. that it can be cleansed to a certain level where you can use it for irrigation. It's not harmful to um, irrigate with it and it's, it doesn't have any harmful effects on humans. Mm -hmm. But you know where, as you said, the myth, we're used to having so much water, so why, why bother putting money into wastewater? Yeah. But I mean, the reality of the fact is that throughout the world, 80% of our wastewater is unused and it's it's an untapped resource yeah um uh, depending on the level you have nutrients yeah. which can then make your give higher yields you know more plump mm -hmm. um crops you know to that extent but because you know we shied away from putting in a kind of infrastructure or looking into reusing wastewater because it's a taboo yeah. Yeah. Um, you know we haven't expert and then we end up putting pesticides and then that affects the water quality that mr ake and the students are having yeah. and then you have the whole domino effect yeah. of one action creating a consequence and creating a consequence further on so this is why we're tackling wastewater this year to let you know that you don't have to buy all these pesticides and stuff you know you have a valuable resource right in your backyard yeah. Now, the, the second issue I wanted to touch on was literally wastewater. Um, 
you know, I remember the last reef report card that came out uh, cited that the reef had uh, some algae on it, I believe, uh, that indicated that or wastewater, literally, or sewage uh, was leaking out all the way into the reef. And it really has been something where, you know, the city has outgrown the sewage system and it's going to be extremely costly to address. But when you look at it from a hydrology standpoint, understanding how uh, there's a very important balance that has to be created, uh, what, what does this mean and what are some of the areas that, I mean, how do you work to be able to, to change this? Well, it's basically based on what Mr. Ake does. Mm -hmm. this, the report showed what was happening. Mm -hmm. So now we have to go and do more intensive localized research and see where the dominant um, contaminant is. And then yeah. we try to tackle that area. I mean, we're all cognizant that Belize is below sea level. Mm -hmm. Yes. So whatever we put in the ground is eventually going to end yeah. up yeah. back in the reef. And mm -hmm. so that's, this is why the watershed um, and e freshwater ecosystems course yeah. that UB is doing is very important because it, it teaches you ridge to reef. Mm -hmm. And what most people don't understand, if you're not in the field, and I was one of them, yeah. that what you do on land end up in the water. Yeah. But it doesn't come home until you actually see the results. Yeah, until you start to see <laughs> reports that say, listen, everything we're doing is going right out onto the reef. Right. And I'm not, to, not to miss the point, it did include also agricultural waste. Let, yeah. Let's talk a bit up more about yeah. that. Uh, the, the, the issue right now in Belize, it's it, everybody, both the NGOs and government departments are doing uh, monitoring of water quality. However, there's no um, joining of, of that information, mm -hmm. right? there's no sharing. And right now with this collection of baseline data, it's preliminary data of, of water quality. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to agriculture um, practices, it's, um, there's uh, the nitrates and phosphates that are the many greens that uh, is comes derived from the fertilizers, and eventually that from the river it ends up to the reef that gives um, algae growth or mm -hmm. technical word is eutrophication. And does it? And how Ms. Williams mentioned, you have to uh, find the the point source of that um, those high levels of nitrates or phosphates. Mm -hmm. but, but know that the, there's um, environmental regulations that. Um, industries have to comply when it comes to levels of nitrous and phosphate. Yeah. Okay. All right. yeah. all now, and, and <coughs> perhaps the issue there is enforcement? Yeah. Well, yeah. what happened is that you have various ministries that have policies or they have legislations and you would often hear maintain the buffer, don't cut the buffer. And it's not because we don't want you to have that sea view, it's because it has a, a secondary purpose or yeah. really a primary purpose primary. depending on, on where you sit. Yeah. On the scientific side it's a primary purpose, on the private side it's probably aesthetics. Mm -hmm. But um, if you maintain the buffer, it then helps you with the filtration of the same nitrates and phosphates from entering the water. Okay. So in, in reality we're trying to help you. Yeah. We're not trying to stop you or penalize or anything in that manner. It's just that we know why you need to do it. And it's, mm -hmm. it's just kind of curbing the behavior and, and relating it so that everybody could understand it. And so that's what these campaigns are all about. So how do you build that relation? Mm -hmm. Because that's the key part. I mean, you, you're so right. We may not be cognizant of a problem because we don't see it for ourselves. Uh, mm -hmm. It seems to dissipate into the sea and you think okay well it's taken yeah. care of but that's not the case mm -hmm. well uh, one from the academic point of view is uh, trying to close the gap between the academia and the the um well the, the businesses or are, are, are the people mm -hmm. because um, most of the time the, the academia is you know their own their own they're doing their own thing research but um that information needs to be and distributed and it's reached to those people that actually are primary water users mm -hmm. and especially in the industry or culture and, and that's the I like to be take a proactive um, initiative to go out there and, and for example do the education outreach um, go talk about you know be a guest speaker or just just so that that information be reached to those um, people that are using water either business or for agriculture production mm -hmm. you know, yeah, yeah. Like I, I what i wanted to know was especially that you spoke about the buffer are people taking heed of this because we know that when it comes to especially beautification that would be one of the biggest part of it so they would eventually uh, disrupt that whole buffer situation but are people taking heed of it 
Uh, well, we can't really measure it if they're taking uh -huh. heat. It would show up in water quality, but with, with water, you know, it, it takes a very long time uh -huh. for water to, what we say, heal itself. And usually it's in, it wouldn't be in any generation that we would be here to see. Mm -hmm. So that's why we use the World Water Day campaigns with the jingle competition, with the poetry to get the younger minds stimulated and researching because, you know, as children, you go home and if it's them teach us say, mm -hmm. you know, it has a different feel when it comes like you don't go what teacher says. Yes. Yeah. So with the jingle competition and with the, um, the poetry, we incite students to research information and mm -hmm. present it in a way that their peers yeah. would understand and, and, you know, take heed to it, so to speak. I remember that also the, sorry, um, <coughs> the trivia. Really yes, we, um, well, we have various competitions going on, but the, um, the trivia is just more information based. We're okay. more keen with the, the comp jingle competition and the poetry because it allows you to absorb information and then explain it in your own words. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're, we're trying to use different angles. We yeah. know that sitting on a podium and, and lecturing somebody doesn't actually work, yeah. okay. <laughs> right? So we have to use these creative ways that we know about to, to get the message out. And what we do is that um, for the last two years with the poetry competition, what we're doing is trying to publish those poems so it's okay. available. Mm -hmm. And so it's not just for a specific competition and it stays there. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to, you know, move ahead and increase what we're doing with our awareness. Because if you don't come to the open mic, I mean, most of the time you don't hear what's going on. Yeah. And if you're not at the ceremonies, you don't hear who wins. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're, we're finding another way of publishing the poem so that it's out there anyway. Winners, everybody's a winner, but you know, we have that tedious job or artist job of choosing one person when all of them are so good <laughs> you know so um we're trying to make information more available for the, the entire public okay so the poetry let's let's talk a little bit about that um last year you came and you said it was an absolute hit that people have really uh jumped on board when it comes yes. to creating their own poetry and expressing themselves creatively right. about uh the overall theme of water yes uh, um, tell us a bit about some of the submissions you got this year well last year we had the whole length and breadth of the country every single district had an entry in that poetry competition um, this year we haven't reviewed the numbers as yet but we have gotten some that I've read that are I mean out there yeah you just can't decide you're like Wait, this song's good and like no but this one song's good so <laughs> yeah. you know you have to go to the rubric like diction <laughs> and content yeah. and yeah. all that <laughs> sad stuff that you don't want to deal with yeah <laughs> but i mean all of them we, we consider them winning entries it's just a hard job to yeah. choose one or choose three that <clears throat> that are the best what seems to be the message that has uh connected the most with the people who are submitting the poetry well, mostly it's high school students. Yeah. Okay. And so we know they've been doing their research. And um, I don't want to give away any of the, the poems that, <laughs> that yeah. I saw, but they're, they're very rhythmic. Mm -hmm. they, um, they rhyme, they have alliterations, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like upbeat, like you would practically want to dance to the songs. <laughs> and, but they're just poems. Yeah. And so we're looking forward to reading the remainders that we have gotten. And mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a fun job judging who <laughs> wins. <laughs> you know, when it comes to uh, the, 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 the mentality, especially of our young people, they're very creative. So I'm sure the task on your side is extremely, is extremely tedious, which is, of course, what we have to go through. Now, when it comes to World Water Day activities, where will mm -hmm. these be held? And what can one expect when visiting? Okay. This year, we're having it at the Princess Hotel. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's from 9 until 4. Mm -hmm. um, the, the setting for this year is to have presentations on water quality, on companies that um, do wastewater services. I know in Belize, most of us don't know about these companies mm -hmm. because we haven't seen the need to use them before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But now we're becoming eco-friendly and you know, environmentally friendly and we want all these sustainable management practices. And so we said, you know what, apart from just doing the whole lecturing, the educational background, let's bring in the companies, make people aware of what is available and you know you, we could change the attitude or could possibly affect a change in the attitude going that way mm -hmm. so we'll be having presentations from different wastewater companies mm -hmm. we have from BWSL I'm sure you would want to be there for that one <laughs> we have um, <laughs> UB we have Department of the Environment Ministry of Health mm -hmm. um, you know a, a big cross-section of all the water and wastewater management entities in Belize Mm -hmm. And over the past few years that uh, we've got 
World, we've, been, we've been celebrating World Water Day. As a matter of fact, we didn't get to it. What date will, will this be held? It will, this year we got lucky. It's mm. March 22nd. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to mention that it's March Correct. 22nd. So this your open year. mic will be next week? Right, the open mm. mic will be next week to um, where all the poets who were shortlisted, mm -hmm. they have an, in, an opportunity to present so they can be flamboyant, they can be loose, yeah. you know, Excellent. express yourself. Mm -hmm. We like to say so. Um, that's really a fun night. So you guys should definitely make it out. Uh, you will be amazed. And that one is going to be where? Well, we are still working on the venue for the open mic, but we'll be sure to share that with you. <laughs> um, we have it on our Facebook page. Yeah. Um, our different committee members, we have the Climate Change Office, mm -hmm. Department of the Environment, PUC, mm -hmm. BWS, Hydrology, UB. Oh. We all share our um, all the information on our personal Facebook pages, on our work awesome. Facebook pages, on the ministry pages, <laughs> you know, so, so we're trying to cover all of it. Yes. And we have other um, appearances, so we will be sure to bring that information. <laughs> and you also have the jingle competition. Right, that's an interesting one. We're looking yeah. forward to... Um, to is it one. closed off already? The deadline is... Yes, is it was February 10th. Okay. But, um, mm -hmm. If we're not too happy with the, um, the yes. entries, we mm -hmm. might extend it a little bit just to get give people more time mm -hmm. to um, make entries. So you're really tapping into <laughs> uh, the creative ways that people can talk about this information or share this information that you do oh, in a classroom yeah. and that you do every day, right. uh, uh, whether in the media or in the work that you do. Mm -hmm. um, if you find one area when it comes to water management, uh, wastewater that people just seem to get, that they understand, children or adults, what would it be? Um, I have children, so <laughs> I would be biased <laughs> to say. Uh -huh. But um, what they have learned is that every time I hear the water running, I'm like, look, I'm, <laughs> you're going to make me pay BWS too much money. Like, <laughs> take off that top. <laughs> you know? So they understand the financial. Yes, yeah. I make them understand the financial part of it. And on the technical side, I try to include them on whatever we're doing. If I'm doing a presentation, I practice at home. Yeah. And they'll be like, Mommy, don't do that. You know, that, <laughs> that kind of thing. But um, yeah. that's just basically how we try to relate it to everyday experiences. Um, mm -hmm. so, okay, we go into the schools. Mm -hmm. um, we went to PG last right. year because, you know, PG is in the south and it's kind of hard to travel and to mm -hmm. move them and stuff. So we don't want anyone being left out. Yeah. Okay. So we take the presentations to PG mm -hmm. and we target the high schools and the mm -hmm. university down there and then we do a presentation for them as well. So we're at a point where it's no man left out. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Right. So um, <laughs> we, we do different creative ways to try to get the message across yeah. throughout the whole country. And with your university students? Well, Mostly in the practical part, they, yeah. they, and and I remember, like when the they have their facial expression and say, oh, like that's why. And mostly, I, I like to connect with the with the microbes, right? mm -hmm. especially when they say, oh well, I got this from the from the drainage at around my house or in the river, uh -huh. and this is what you what we what you see <laughs> in the water, <laughs> right? And um, apart from that, it's it's. Um, just the financial part also. Mm -hmm. And say, mm -hmm. okay, if you conserve, but sir, I said, well, how can we do that? Well, we'll just make sure um, at the end of the month, you'll pay less water, mm -hmm. right? You know, but uh, water, uh, water can be fun as well. So what would be some of the most fun questions being asked from students when you guys head out, uh, head out into the schools? Um, most of them that we saw, there was like, you know, some of the, we show pictures of the technicians repelling down the side of the bridges like wow like what are they doing yeah. you know so <laughs> we're like okay well they're putting in a, a monitoring station but mm -hmm. because it's so high on the bridge we need to have them repel down yeah. the side of the bridge because the ladder is not long enough yeah. and so they, they tend to get more curious with the more dangerous stuff <laughs> it's not the safe stuff adventurous <laughs> stuff. Yeah. yeah we use adventurous but it's dangerous <laughs> No, but that is key because when we're talking about quality of water, I mean, it, it's not just about what comes out of the tap. It's not just uh, the stagnant water that, that you may see around. It's even the one that's flowing through the river that people access yes. for right. many different uses. And that brings me back to watersheds and the importance of watersheds. One of the areas that we've heard quite a bit of concern about is from the Chiki Bowl, from FCD, um, and the activities that take place there and how it can potentially affect our watershed. Uh, what is the monitoring like in, in looking at that and are we seeing the effects 
uh, that FCD has been sounding the alarm about? Yeah, well, with the chicken bowl, it's where the headwaters are. Exactly. It's where it originates. So yeah. um, FCD has been doing a great job in terms of monitoring. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, we would then see that more along the Macal, Mopan, and into yeah. the Belize River. So mm -hmm. whatever is happening in the, in the headwaters will definitely mm -hmm. stream. And so the Department of the Environment does monitoring, Ministry of Health does monitoring for, mm -hmm. um, for health reasons, mm -hmm. DOE is for the environment, um, UV does for water quality with their um, baseline collection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so um, hydrology does monitoring as well, but what we're noticing is that we need to partner. And yeah. so that's what the World Water Day Committee is about, that we get everybody who is involved in some aspect of water, water quality, mm -hmm. water reuse, so that, you know, we mesh ideas, we know what each agency is doing and we try to, to coordinate our activities because duplication is an issue. Yeah. So we don't want to duplicate, we want to use our resources sustainably. Yeah. Yeah. And what would you say is the most critical area that Belizeans should pay? Maybe we don't have any sort of water crisis, but we need to pay attention so that we can mitigate any potential uh, negative consequences later. Um, well, Belize, the water distribution spatially is not in our favor. Mm -hmm. Um, we tend to use most from the central and the north. So mm -hmm. the south is then, I want to say avoided, but it's, it's minimized than the central and the northern region. Okay. But um, overall, I would say not any one watershed is, is different from the other. It's just depending on the uses. Um, some have more users. So along the Mopan, Macau, Belize yeah. River, yeah. Um, up north with the agriculture, you know, with the transboundary issues. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to be a little bit more vigilant than in the south. But across the board, I, I can't in good conscience say, yeah. oh, the central and the, no the north <laughs> need to, to worry more than the rest. Okay. It's, it's all of us. Okay. And from your perspective, as well? I believe it's uh, have the changing mentality of um, we have to have this notion of or the principle of water conservation, even though we believe has a six months of rain, but still um, sometimes it, um, some households won't have, um, don't get water. However, um, we have to have that principle in our heads. We have to do our part individually to conserve water. Uh, and go back to some of the traditions. Yes. Get a vat. Yeah. Yes. You know, once, once we get piped water, it's like, vat, no, I'm not doing that. It's like, no, I have piped water in my house. <laughs> you know, the vat, the vat is there. That's what the, waste, that's what the wastewater is about. Yeah. Yeah. You, you um, use the wastewater like in industries to cool off your machines. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you use it in irrigation for the nutrient base. Mm -hmm. um, use it in sustainable cities. You collect it, you um, store it, you treat it, it comes back as um, potable water, potable water yeah. for you to drink. And again, that's the uh, perception issue yeah. that we need to work yeah. through. Because in reality, we're all drinking recycled water every day. <laughs> People don't see it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody just looked at their glass of water. Yeah. Like, really? well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, but you know, it's great to, to build a connection. So uh, that's how you can really start to understand why the efforts that you undertake are so important. As you pointed out, World Water Day will be celebrated on March 22nd uh, at, you'll have your displays and presentations at the right. Princess Hotel mm -hmm. in Belize City. Right. And yeah. you also have your open mic night coming up. Yes. February 24th, and that'll be open to the public. <coughs> yes. Mm -hmm. All right, and people can follow you all online to be able to see exactly where it's going to be. At a right. venue to be announced later. Yes, yeah. venue to be announced. <laughs> all right, anything else you'd like to share with us at this time? Um, mm -hmm. I just want to say thank you for having us. You know, mm -hmm. getting um, attention focused on water is kind of a bit a step down from all the other issues that we have going on <laughs> every day. So we're just thankful that you guys were able to fit us in and so that we could talk about water and increase mm -hmm. the awareness of the public as to why we should not waste water. All yes. right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take a break. But of course, we actually, our third segment is going to focus uh, once again on water. And we have a couple of experiments that we'll be doing as well <laughs> in conjunction with uh, some university students. I'm sure they're your students, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So we'll have that a bit later on. But we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we'll be joined by two attorneys talking about the implications of the recent ruling uh, about pawn shops. So that's coming up after the break. <laughs> <laughs> 